Good afternoon everyone, my name is Rachel and I work in Reader Services here at the National Library. Welcome to this Aussie Sports Hero webinar. Before we move on, I will just turn off the camera. Okay, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which this webinar is being held and pay respects to their elders, both past and present. I pay my respects to the elders of other communities in Australia and extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people in attendance today. Now we've probably all been missing our sport, myself included. However, today's webinar is not a celebration of Aussie sporting heroes as such. Apart from having a lifelong love of many sports and having evolved into a true Canberra Raiders fan, I also have a background in cultural studies. Sport, of course, plays an important role in many cultures across the world, not least our own. The purpose of today's webinar is to demonstrate how our e-resources can be used to undertake social and cultural research, whether for scholarly or personal interest reasons. Specifically, I will be looking at the relationship between the representation of Aussie sporting heroes and the Australian dream. To put this into some context, this year the library's theme has been Australian dreams. This theme explores visions for the future, ideals, aspirations, goals, reminiscence or nostalgia, and reflections on who we are. Undoubtedly, part of this dream narrative is the idea of Australia as a great sporting nation. Traditionally, our sporting heroes have looked something like this. So Donald Bradman, who was described at a Deakin lecture by John Cowell as the embodiment of Australian character ideal arguably the nation's greatest sporting hero, who also happens to be a white male cricketer. But what about our sporting heroes who are not white, not male, and or don't behave like Donald Bradman? In this webinar, I want to demonstrate how you can explore the betrayal of our contemporary sporting heroes, and how and why this might differ to the Australian dream ideal of the great Aussie sporting hero. To do this, I have chosen to explore three case studies which I hope will demonstrate the diversity of our modern day sporting heroes. These are the Australian men's cricket team ball tampering scandal, Adam Goods, and women in sport. Now I'm sure you all appreciate that these topics can all be explored in depth, but with the time limitations we have, I will very much just be skimming the surface of each of them. But I hope they give you a flavor of the type of research possible using our e-resources and encourages you to do more of your own searching. Also, I'd just like to reiterate that this webinar is specifically focused on our e-resources. I will not be spending time looking at the library's catalogue or trove or indeed any other specific resources which ordinarily would be very useful for this type of research. Instead, I will show how to navigate our e-resources portal, give you research tips along the way, and demonstrate the great value of this service and wealth of digital resources available to you. As well as searching across the full text content in our portal, I will also be demonstrating some specific databases, namely Newsbank and Pressreader, which are excellent sources of contemporary newspaper and magazine coverage of Australian sport. First though, a general introduction to our e-resources portal. An exciting feature of the portal is that you can easily conduct full text searches of many of the e-journals, e-books and more in our collection. You can also choose to search specific databases individually. You can access the e-resources portal via the library's homepage, which is noa.gov.au and then click on the e-resources box just down here. To access licensed databases and the full text content in the e-resources portal from home, you will need a National Library card. For those of you who don't already have a library card, it is very easy to sign up. Simply visit the library's homepage and click the Get a Library Card link just here and fill out the online form to apply for a card. If you cannot visit the library to pick up your card, we offer a complimentary mailing service and we'll send your card out to you to begin your research at home. So going back to the library's homepage, I'm now going to click on the link to the e-resources. You'll find that you only need to accept the terms and conditions as you enter the site, rather than each individual database. And this means you can move between databases without interruption. To log in from home, 
click the link at the upper centre of the eResources homepage. You'll be redirected to our catalogue to enter your details, but we'll be taken back to eResources upon logging in. To log in, you just need your user ID located on the back of your library card and your surname. When using our eResources on site like I am today, there is no need to log in as you will automatically be given access to everything the portal has to offer by just clicking the link at the top of the page. Now you'll also notice that some links in the top banner of the eResources homepage. Our eResources page now links directly to our catalogue and vice versa, so you can jump back and forth between the two. We've also included a link to our research guides, so you can easily refer to them for research assistance. If you know what specific database you're wanting to use, or you want to find a database on a particular subject, go to the Browse eResources tab, which is just here. Here you can refine by access level. The library has three different categories of e-resources, those that are freely available to anyone over the internet, licensed resources that you can access from home with your library card, and on-site resources for which you need to be in the library building. For the purpose of today's session, we'll be focusing on licensed resources, which you can use at home to conduct your research. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to explore our first case study the Australian men's cricket team ball tampering scandal. And to do this, I'm going to use the Newsbank Access World News database. Newsbank is a licensed resource which includes current and historical full text newspapers from across the globe. It provides coverage from news resources from over 172 countries, including over 600 titles from Australia. You can find and access individual databases several ways, including via the library's catalogue. But a simple way to find a database, however, is via the Browse eResources tab. Here you can search for databases by either typing in keywords or the title of the database, or even the first letter of the title into the search box, or you can browse by first letter here. You can also browse by topic, for example, newspapers, if you're looking for newspapers, or by access conditions. So for example, you can browse all our licensed resources. So to find and access Newsbank, I'm just going to start typing in the title Newsbank and it actually will pop up before I've even finished the title and I can click on the link to the database here. Now within Newsbank itself, you can access an advanced search by clicking on more search options, or you can search by date or by map which allows you to refine your search by location. You can also search or browse through an A to Z list of all news sources found in Newsbank by clicking on the A to Z source list up here. When using e-resources for your research, you will find there is invariably an option to conduct an advanced search. However, I much prefer to do a basic keyword search and then use limiters to refine my results. I find this method provides a wealth of relevant material to work with and can lead you to theories, ideas, and research which you might not originally identify. Some keyword search advice, however. Keep updating your keywords as you go through your research. They are only a starting point, as once you begin reading material, you'll find other terms that will be fruitful to search as well. Remember, you can experiment with combinations of keywords too. So to find some initial keywords, I need to unpack my topic and then start with what I know. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with the ball tamping scandal when during a test match, Cameron Bancroft was caught trying to rough up one side of the ball with sandpaper to make it swing in flight. Captain Steve Smith and Vice Captain David Warner were found to be involved and all three received unprecedented sanctions from Cricket Australia. I'm interested in finding reports of the scandal to see how it might have impacted the betrayal of Australian men's cricket and cricketers, both here in Australia and overseas. And I'm also interested in knowing if there has been any redemption since for the sporting heroes involved, and if so, how and why this might have been achieved. So some keywords which I might want to start with are Australian cricket ball tampering. I'm just going to put that in here. Australian cricket ball tampering and hit the search button. Okay. Now, I can see that there's thousands of results on that search, so it was obviously fairly big news. 
However, I can also see on the left hand side here that the results are sorted by newest. So I have articles from this month sitting at the top of my results list and they are not necessarily the most relevant. So I'm going to change my results list to sort by best match. I'm clicking on the left here and this time I get results at the top of my list which date mainly from around at the time of the incident which was the 24th of March 2018. Alternatively, I can narrow my search results to focus on reports from around the time of the scandal by using the date limiters on the left hand side. So I'm going to narrow my search results to those dated between the 24th and 31st of March 2018. And if I hover over the, uh, the little question mark next to date, I can see that I need to enter my date as month, day, year. So I'm just going to go that 24th, 2018 and 3rd for the March, and then 31, 2018, and apply that. And we'll scroll back up to the top. So, even just for that one week alone, there are still nearly 3,000 results. So, if I want to read a preview of an article, I can either just hover or click where it says preview, or even just hover over the article itself, and a little article preview will pick up. So for example, for the first result, we cheat at cricket, allows me just to read a little bit more from the beginning of the article. But if I scroll down the first page and have a look at the ideas, look at the results, I get sort of a good idea of the headlines and the reaction created by this event, including that the Prime Minister at the time, Michael Turnbull, said the nation was shocked and bitterly disappointed over the ball tampering incident. But I can also focus my results a little bit more by adding some new keywords. So I'm just going to add the word heroes to my search, keeping the date range the same, and just see what I come up with from that. And here I get a bit more of a manageable list of 77 results. Um, and again, I can read through the headlines to see not only the reaction in Australia, but also from overseas. Now, if I want to, I can tackle these two results as two, these two, this set of results as two separate groups, those from our region and those from elsewhere, by using the location limiter on the left hand side. So, for example, I can click on Australia Oceana, which will find both Australian and New Zealand results. If I want to narrow further, I can down to Australia or New Zealand. But if I just scroll down this first page again, I get some example of the impact of the incident. For example, I can see headlines that read such as brazen arrogant act seals downfall of Australian greats. Our local cricketers slam their heroes for ball tampering disgrace. And a bit further down, spotlight on ball tampering reveals bigger moral questions. So if I like, I can then clear the filter up the top here for Australia Oceana so that we can have a look at results from other locations overseas. So if I go back to the source location and um, just click on more options and click all the other overseas locations here and just apply that. And this is a good way of finding some outsiders views as well of Australia and also its relationship with sport. Um, so for example, if I scroll down, there is an uh, article here from a UK paper called the Northern Echo, titled Comment, Does Australia's reaction to the ball tampering scandal prove it's the greatest sporting nation on earth? And I'm just going to read a few lines from the actual article. Australians are terrible losers. It is their fiercely competitive spirit which makes them such daunting opponents on the field of sport. Australians are also terrible winners. It is not enough for them to celebrate their victories. Aussie supporters and stars seem to regard sporting triumphs as chances to needle their vanquished foe with a form of boorish arrogance, which too often crosses the line dividing banter from bullying. And the article goes on to ask, would sporting cheats in any other country or in any other sport be treated to such a public shaming as former captain Steve Smith, who wept as he apologized for bringing shame to a nation which wells sporting glory to its sense of self-worth? So not only does this article contain some interesting content, but I'll also use this choice, to, this chance to point out that as with most databases, there are various options available to you for managing individual pieces of content. So for articles in Newsbank, 
you can find options above the title of the article, which allow you to do such things as citing, emailing, printing, downloading, saving to your folder, and also copying the link, getting the permalink. You can also choose to change the size of the font or have the article read to you. But for now, I'm just gonna head back to our results using the back to results command here. And I'm quickly going to investigate if there's been any redemption for the players involved in the scandal. Firstly, I'm gonna clear all my filters using the clear filters command up at the top here. And I'm going to replace the word heroes with redemption. Okay. Now also I'm going to change uh, my results from best match to newest using the filter here on the left, as I'm really interested in how the cricketers are currently being betrayed. If I scroll down a little, I can see some interesting results, including Sandpaper and Sobbing, two years on from Australian cricket's darkest hour. Story of good men in baggy greens and slow road to redemption. Now several of these articles um, discuss, an, discuss an eight episode web series called The Test, which documents the redemption of the players and the Australian cricket side over a period of 18 months after the ball tampering incident. If I open the Sandpaper and Sobbin article, which is from the independent newspaper, the author George Sessions writes that the scandal would be a watershed moment for the Aussies, where the mindset shifted from win at all costs to trying to do things the right way. The author mentions that not all the players involved have fully redeemed themselves. However, as he goes on to say, it has been a completely different story for Smith, who has enjoyed a sensational 12 months and will be the star of the 2019 Ashes, proving to be an almost immovable object for England bowlers. It was during the 50 over World Cup where the former captain made his return to the international scene alongside Warner. The pair were booed initially, but Smith's batting exploits were soon turned jeers to applause from English crowds. So maybe winning at all costs is no longer part of Australian cricket culture but instead winning modestly is the key to redemption and appreciation. But these reports of the scandal in relation to Australian cricket culture and how this might have changed over the last couple of years gives me some new keywords I can try. So for example, I could try a search on Australian cricket as a phrase and the keywords culture and sandpaper. But hopefully by using some new keywords, I will find some results which help to contextualize the information I've already found. However, before I leave this topic for good, I would just recap on the searches that I've, that, and how they have changed while I was researching the ball tampering scandal. So initially we had a search for Australian cricket ball tampering. I then added the word heroes to combine some new keywords and gain some more specific results. We next had Australian cricket ball tampering redemption, which was really just changing the keywords to get some other types of results. And then Australian cricket as a phrase with culture sandpaper, which is combining some new keywords and, and phrases which have come up during my research so far. So now I'm going to head back to the e-resources portal and move on to Adam Goods, the First Nation AFL star. Now I could find lots of really useful information on Goods in Newsbank, but I want to use this opportunity to show you how to search across the e-resources portal, which allows you to conduct full text searches of many of our databases. At this stage, approximately 75% of our online content is full text searchable, and we're working to improve this even more. Once again, to begin, I need to start by unpacking my case study and identify some keywords. Attention has recently returned to Adam Goods with the screening of two documentaries, one titled The Final Quarter and the other The Australian Dream. Both retail the controversy which began with an incident during the 2013 Indigenous Round AFL match when Goods asked security to remove a 13-year-old girl spectator who had called him an ape. I'd like to investigate whether this incident and what happened afterwards highlights cracks in certain aspects of The Australian Dream and whether it sheds light on the portrayal of our non-white Aussie sporting heroes. Again, I'll only be demonstrating how to get started with this research and I'm very much just scratching the surface. 
I can begin by searching some keyword terms in the e-resources portal to see what I come up with. Again, to get the most out of the e-resources portal, I will need to change or modify my original keywords over time. But to begin with, I'm just going to search on the phrase, whoops, Adam Goods. Okay, now I can see that there's a fair amount of results there, so I'm definitely going to have to refine my list. Before I do though, I'm going to open one of the results to show you how easy it is to access this material. I can see that several of my results are available as full text. I know this because it states full text, both in the results list and the item records. And it's important to take note of this because our portal does also return results for just citations as well as full text content. So to see the full text content, I just need to click on the PDF full text which I'm going to do for the result, a race to the goal from the Metro magazine. So with this, in this case, I've just opened it up in, the, in my current tab, but alternatively, I could have chosen to right click on the link and open the article in a new tab. I'm just gonna scroll down a bit. It's gonna take a little while to load because it is a PDF with a lot of photographs. But we'll just scroll down. This article basically discusses the two recent films on goods as do several of my search results. It also provides more information about the incident, the wider public reaction, and what it all might have meant. And as the author Travis Johnson writes, the final act of the sporting career of Adam Goods served as a vocal point for a, well, the polite term would be discussion about racism, not just on the footy oval, but in Australian society and culture as a whole. Following the incident, Goods became the subject of increasing hostility from both game day crowds and public commentators. And after enduring a campaign of abuse that included being loudly and repeatedly booed at seemingly every game he played during the 2015 season, Goods announced his retirement from football in September that year. Johnson goes on to say, the broader discord around what is now generally referred to as the booing controversy was prolonged and often heated, with pundits on both sides of the political divide ruminating on the meaning of it all. Was it racist? Was it even about race? Who gets to decide that it is? Did Goods comport himself with dignity, or was he, as was averred by many of his critics, a poor sportsman who was performing for sympathy, just as he allegedly performed for free kicks on the field? And Johnson continues, this rigmarole has proven fertile ground for factual filmmakers with Goods thanks to his reputation as one of the most esteemed players of our national sport, serving as a lightning rod for uncomfortable contentions about race in modern Australia. The author contends that the pair of films viewed together provide a more complete and nuanced understanding of Goods, his position in our society, and what the events of his final years as a professional footballer can tell us about our attitudes to race, respect, and success. So there's a fair bit there to work on, but for the moment, I'm going to go back to our results list, just using the command here on the top left, and move to refine my list a little bit more. And I can do this by using the limiters on the left-hand side here. I can see under format that there are a lot of results from news sources. This is not surprising. And as I want to examine the betrayal of goods, they're most likely relevant to my research. So for now, I'm just going to click on the news format button there. And if I wished, I could narrow my results further by publication, if I scroll down here, and choose one of those that's there. Or if I click on show more, I can also see that there's all these other publications, news publications that are part of my search results. I can also, if I want, narrow my search by content provider. So bearing in mind that I'm on news at the moment, there's Newsbank, which we were looking at earlier. And if I click on that, that will bring up results from Newsbank. These results include a link for full text from Newsbank. And for most Newsbank's results, you can click on the link and be taken directly to the full text content of the article, which is a very useful feature. However, you may also get results for material in Newsbank to which the library does not have access. This is rare and it tends, only to, uh, tends not to apply for newspaper titles as such. So an example is material sourced from the ABC 
and we're currently working on gaining access to the full text of these results. It's important to remember that you can change what limiters you've applied to your search as you go. So here I'm just going to uncheck the news bank limiter and I'm going to have a closer look at the subject limiters for our search. Now I can click on show more again as I did before to see all the subject headings but I've noticed there's a subject heading here for adding goods himself which reduces my results to a more manageable number. But it's important to remember when limiting by subject that not all of our content has actually been assigned a subject heading yet. I can see for example, that there are no news results when using this subject heading. And this is because the content from Newsbank, as well as some other providers that we have, have not actually been assigned subject headings in our portal. So for now, I'm actually just going to remove the subject heading for adding goods. Now, if, I only, if I'm only wanting to see Australian content, I can refine by geography using the limiter down here. Or instead, I could uh, actually, if I want to look at overseas content, I could just uh, refine it that way to overseas. I can also refine by date range up the top here, by subject which, we, which we've covered, and also language and more. It's worth experimenting with these limiters too to see what different results are suggested. Another way of refining my search, of course, is to add different or additional keywords. So for example, I could add the word hero. and see what we get. Okay, so it looks like there's some potentially interesting and useful articles here. For example, my Adam Goods is a hero for our times, which is from the age, and was written just after he retired. In this article, the author Tim Dick acknowledges the treatment Goods received after calling out racism, and interestingly praises Goods for demonstrating qualities which are reminiscent of our traditional Donald Bradman type sporting hero. To give you an idea of what I mean, I'll quote one section. He played masterfully on the field. He serves well off it. He doesn't show off. He is unlike what we see from too many of Australia's sportsmen, full of hubris, too big for their boots, and reveling in quick praise for modest records. Not goods. He is an example to those like Nick Kyrgios and the Australian men's cricket team. He proves that modesty remains both honorable and popular. He lives the motto, actions, not words. He is a proud Indigenous man, an inspiration to all Australia. So without analysing this passage too much, I think the author is speaking to one of our underlying sporting hero narratives, one which emphasises the importance of modesty and of action speaking louder than words. His argument concurs neatly with the previous story around Steve Smith's redemption, which emphasised the importance of winning modestly. The author contends that those sporting heroes who live up to this enjoying image will be celebrated. However, clearly Goods was not celebrated nor revered by everyone, so other narratives must also have been at work. And if I go back to my results list using the command just here, there's one other article that I wanted to look at, which is the two stories of Adam Goods. And it's taken from the Eureka Street Journal. And in this article, you might be able to get some idea of what other narratives were at play. And as the author states in here, Goods was outspoken on racial issues, calling out racist remarks, whether they were made by club presidents or people in the stands. This provoked the ire of those who didn't like their sport being politicized and perhaps didn't like their racist attitudes being challenged. So perhaps challenging us, making us feel uncomfortable, does not fit the traditional narrative of, of the Aussie sporting hero, particularly if those doing the challenging sit outside the mainstream ideal of the white Anglo male sporting hero. If I click on the detailed record link just here on the left to the article, I can also find some of the subject terms, which I might find useful to search on, such as racism in sports, which can help to further contextualize my research so far. So hopefully now you have an idea of how to build and refine your search within the e-resources portal. But before we move on, there are a couple of other things I'd like to quickly show you. Firstly, how to organize your content. So if I go back to the result list as a starter, so I've started to identify material that is of interest to me, but rather than looking at the content in each record, 
I can create a small or curated group of resources by clicking on the little folder icon to the right of the item record, just here. And I'll save a couple more to my group. Now to see all these saved items together in my personalized list, I can click on the folder view link on the right hand side. And there they are. Now I've done this using the on-site version of eResources, which logs you in as a general library user. This means that upon leaving this library computer at the end of today's session, these groups will be lost. This doesn't matter so much if you plan to do all your research and reading in one go, but for most of us that isn't always the case. Luckily, there is an option to create a specific profile for yourself that will remember your saved groups and keep them safe for returning to another day. The profile you will need to create to do this is separate to your library card login. In fact, it's a profile with EBSCO, the provider with whom we collaborated to create this portal. In creating this EBSCO profile, you'll be able to not only access your saved groups within the library, but also remotely so you can research at home. Now to create this uh, EBSCO login, simply click on the sign into my EBSCO host link at the top and create your profile. I'm now going to sign in with my profile details and show you what it looks like. So I think those are all saved, we'll try that. Okay, this is where you can get a bit creative with how you organize your content. If you are just beginning your research, you could group all your chosen material under one folder. If you're further into your research and have started to notice common threads amongst your material, you might like to create and name some new folders. If you would like further help with this EBSCO folder management, you can click on the small question mark bubble just here to learn more. So now we've talked about organizing content on a broader level, the collection of content, I'm going to go back to my search results and open one of the records. There we go. So we can look very quickly at how to manage individual pieces of content through each item record. So I will just open up this one here. So on the right hand side, there are a variety of features which allow you to cite the article, print, email, save, export to a bibliography, or you can access the permalink to the article here. Permalinks are very important as they are the guaranteed method of finding your way back to a specific record or page. If you're documenting your research, these are also the links you need to use in your bibliography as they will provide access to your future readers. Additionally, our e-resources portal will generate a variety of citation styles for you, dependent on what you're after. So for now, I'm going to move on to my last case study, women in sport. For generations, our sporting heroes have been predominantly men. Here I want to look at the increasing exposure of women in sport in Australia and whether this is impacting on our ideas of Aussie sporting heroes. Within this framework, I want to look at whether increased exposure of women in sport and the change in nature of their participation has changed Australia's notion of a sporting hero, or whether deeper cultural aspects still need to be addressed. Again, this topic could be researched extensively, but instead, in the time we have left available, I'm going to show you, using some basic searching, another of our databases, namely PressReader. PressReader not only allows you to search across a wide range of newspapers and magazines, but you can also browse specific titles, displaying them in their original format, layout and language. Titles are archived in their original format for three months only, but individual articles dating from approximately 2003 onwards can also be searched and viewed in PressReader. So I'm going to click on New Search, and I'm going to go back into the Browse eResources tab and search for press reader just by typing it in here again as we did before for Newsbank and there's press reader. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, and I'm just going to that. As this is a database in which I can browse full issues of magazines and newspapers in their original format for the past three months, I'm going to start my search by simply browsing some representations of women in sport. To do this, I'm going to choose Australia publication. So choosing from the countries list on the left. And then I'm going to scroll down the categories on the left hand side and pick sports. 
Now, I think you can see from the results that there are not too many representations of women in this list of titles. A couple relate to women in sport, but the vast majority include only male representations on their covers, at least. If we go back to where we started, and we'll just keep going back. Okay, and we pick sports from down the bottom. We can actually see coverage worldwide. And I think you'll see that the trend is not really something that is unique to Australia. There's mainly male representations there as well. But now I'm going to do some searching across the press reader database, which will allow me to find articles dating back several years rather than just the last three months. And I'm going to go back to the homepage. And I'm going to uh, just put some basic keywords in the search box, which is up here on the top right hand side. And to start with, I'm just going to put in women sport heroes. Okay, now this gives me a very large number of results, but before I go any further, I am just going to limit them to Australian publications by clicking on advanced search, going to publications here, and choosing Australia, and go and save, and then search. Okay, but again, I still have a lot of results, and a lot of them don't look very relevant. And this is really because I'm searching on some very generic, heavily used words across a single database containing newspapers and magazines. And these words pop up a lot in the TV guides. So in order to get some more meaningful results, I need to search on some keyword phrases. And I'm going to do this by clicking in the search box in the top right. And I'm going to go to advanced search. And I'm going to change my search here to women's sport as a phrase. Put in and sporting heroes as a phrase. Now, another search I could have tried at this point is women in sport as a phrase and the keyword heroes. But I'm just going to try that for the moment. Now I have a much smaller set of results. Um, I can see on the left hand side, I can either look at my custom results, which are those from Australia, or if I wanted, I could look at overseas results or all publications from choosing the in all publications bit there. But if I click on a result to view the, um, I can click on a result to view the whole article. But before I do, um, I'm just going to point out the three vertical dots, which you can see to the right of the articles, titles in this corner here. If you click on those dots, it gives you access to various functions, such as page view, which allows you to see the original format if the article dates within the last three months, as well as listen to the article, copy, share, or print. But the first article that I'm going to have a look at is We Are Gladiators, the elite athletes looking to raise profile of women's sport, which provides some insight into how and why women in sport are trying to raise their profile. The article from The Guardian, dating from January 2019, discusses the Women in Sport Photo Actions Awards, which aims to capture images showcasing the skill, strength, and athleticism of sportswomen in action, and to combat the traditional stereotyping of the female body image. The project hopes to change the portrayal of female athletes from smiling stationary models to tough, fit competitors, role models, heroes, and leaders. It also aims to increase the visibility of women's sport, with Min Jin Lee, the Australian women's golfer, saying that for generations, our sporting heroes have been predominantly men because they've had the exposure. Another example of an article I might look at is where have Australia's male sporting heroes gone? Which actually asks the question, do we even have an Australian male sporting hero anymore? Written by Stephen Ganavas, the article states that Australian sporting culture does not exist in a vacuum. It is a byproduct of wider cultural trends in this country. This includes, but is not limited to, the boys' club culture in men's team sports, resulting in the win at all costs mentality. And he goes on to say the numerous drug, alcohol, and sex scandals that continue to plague men's sports are indicative of the underbelly of toxic masculinity which permeates through it. The author then, dis then discusses how female athletes are stepping up and filling the voids vacated by their male counterparts, 
with likeable female athletes providing genuine role models with star power for girls and boys. And another one I might look at is a sporting chance. I don't think so which discusses the rising profile of Australian women's sports, whilst also highlighting the inequalities still faced by women regarding pay and conditions. The article from the Daily Examiner dates from 2015, when the female soccer team, the Matildas, ranked ninth in the world for, for a pay rise from 21,000 per annum, one 15th of their male counterparts wage, to $34,000. As a follow on to this, in November last year, the Matildas finally achieved a new pay deal that has gone a long way in achieving equal pay for male and female soccer players here in Australia. However, although both men and women now receive 40% of tournament match payments, there is still some way to go to achieve pay parity as tournament match payments are currently significantly higher for men than women. Now, if I want to find out more about the gender pay gap in sport, I can try a new search by clicking in my search box here. And I'm gonna go with the women's sport and change the second phrase to gender pay gap and search on that. And just sort of uh, scrolling along and looking at the search results there, I can see tags and other keywords which I could pursue further for my research, such as women's rights, human rights, discrimination and feminism. Something else that I might want to examine in this whole case study is the portrayal of women in individual sports. Women are increasingly participating in sports which have historically been strongly associated with masculinity. As an example, the first season of Australia's National Australian Rules Football League for female players began in 2017. Throughout the history of Australian sport, there have been many images which have triggered debate about broader social issues. One which did just that was the photo of Taylor Harris kicking the opening goal during an AFL women's match in 2019, which has come to be known simply as the kick. The photo triggered a wave of misogynistic abuse on social media and was followed by condemnation of the online trolls. If I want to research this incident and the debate which followed, I can search press reader with the words Taylor Harris, which I'll just put in. And we'll change that phrase to the kick. Okay, I can see that there are over 300 results over here with 200 from Australia, which is fairly substantial. I can see articles which reveal that Harris has re recently written her biography, More Than a Kick, including one from the Western Australian here, dating from May this year. And if I click on the three vertical uh, dots and on page view, I can see it in the original layout, which is just there. If I go back to my search results, I can also see articles about the bronze statue that was unveiled in Melbourne in September 2019, which immortalizes Harris's kick, including one from the bulletin which is titled Taylor Gets a Kick Out of Statue. And here Harris basically says the following about the statue. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, young or old, everyone has a right to do what they love. That's what I want people to see when they look at this. So before I leave this uh, particular topic, I'm just going to recap on the key words that came up in my uh, research in Press Reader as I went along. So again, to start with, we had women's sport heroes, which was a very basic beginning with some very broad keywords. Then followed by women's sport and sporting heroes, combining two keyword phrases. And at that point, we could have also tried women in sport as a phrase with the word heroes. Then uh, we moved on to women's sport gender pay gap, using some new keywords that had come up during my research so far. And at that point, we come to the end of our session today. I hope that going through these steps has given you an idea of how our e-resources can greatly assist you with your research, whatever your passions. I hope that by using the three case studies, I've shown you how to best navigate and utilize the portal, as well as how you can investigate individual databases, particularly for primary resources, such as newspapers and magazines, which can be so important for cultural research. Finally, 
If you need any help with our e-resources portal, there are a number of help guides and an introductory video to assist you with navigating this service. You can find all of these on the e-resources homepage via the help tab. And if you need any further assistance at all, you can always use Ask a Librarian. So thank you everyone today for listening and happy researching everyone.